Cheers, Aaron's back in the hey, building. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey. Wait, now that Rich is on, let's talk about who's not showing up today, Rich. Did you hear about Zach Wilson? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> makes me want to drink. We're out of booze here, doing? honey. TJ's uh, TJ are and Chris you, yeah, are doing was, a good job. Yeah, I was seeing uh, you pouring mimosas there today. Well, you know, we want me to come back. We had a uh, we had an extra bottle care of wheels up, so I, I took it out of, took it out of the uh, took it out of the okay. wine cellar and brought it in for the boys today. All right. What so, Rich. Do? Tell us about Tokyo Gold. What has been your favorite highlight of the day? What should we stop well, and watch before we get to Simone? Highlight of the, day, the favorite highlight of the day was the, the group of uh, peers of uh, Lydia Jacoby in Seward, Alaska, watching them watch her win her event and win gold, you know, um, when she's from, you know, a state that has one – uh, long course pool in the entire state in Anchorage, Alaska, which was a two hour drive from her from her hometown. So she and her mom rented an Airbnb so she could train there for months and she winds up winning gold and she's 17. And then just seeing all of her classmates and friends in that town just hopping up and down or slapping the floor and all I could think of is, like, they were kind of like, for the lack of a better phrase, like the hamsters in, in her wheel, you know? Like, they were, like, connected to her and giving her power and strength without her even knowing. Uh, and it's what we love about the Olympics is a story like that and seeing how it affects a small town and and the first ever swimmer from the state of Alaska to make a swimming team and she wins gold. And it's a 17-year-old. She's a little... She's a kid, and just seeing all of that, it's just, it just gets you in all the fields. It really does. It's one amazing. of only, yeah, one of only ten Olympians from the state of Alaska all time, which is kind of incredible. What's it like yeah, there? I know. What's it like there, Rich, uh, with the Simone Biles news? I'm curious about what it feels well, like there, and what are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, like here we are, middle of the day, you know, or middle of our prep, and then all of a sudden, word filters. Oh, by the way, Simone Biles is is withdrawn, and you know, we went through the entire show thinking it was a physical medical issue. Um, and um, obviously we get off the air and we find out it's something completely different. And I saw your guys' conversation about it because um, you guys posted it on Twitter. And I thought you you, you kind of, you, you know, you, 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 if you will, stuck the landing. I mean, um, look, there's two ways to look at it. You know that I've already seen some of the responses to your, your guys' conversation. And, and there's going to be a lot of people saying, you know, she signed up for the Olympics. This is what you. This is what comes with the territory, and and suck it up. But we live in a world now where uh, mental health and mental awareness is just it, or should be viewed just as seriously as anything that requires a crutch or a cast to heal. And um, and so, you know, the. We don't know the pressures of being an Olympic athlete. And not even many Olympic athletes would know maybe the pressures of what Simone Biles uh, must deal with because Simone does uh, maneuvers with her body that no other human being can do or has attempted. So she knows what it requires to, to prepare mentally, physically, to pull off what she needs to pull off. And it's, you know, uh, the New York Times story that you were quoting, Suze, uh, I mean, what is more jarring than to see somebody say that the thing they're looking forward to most is the Olympics being over? And when somebody signs up for something, they might sign up for it because they feel it's what's expected of her or that she would be letting others down, sponsors, parents, family members, friends, teammates. And then once you accept the assignment, you know, a human being comes to maybe regret it. And I just look at it and think to myself, how sad it must feel and how sad it must be for and to her that she views the Olympics as something she regrets agreeing to do and what it must take in order to, in the moment, 
look her teammates in the face and say, this is just not going to happen today. And I feel so sad for her, and I do hope, uh, although as you pointed out, Suze, in your, in, your, in your soliloquy, take however you want to put it, uh, I mean, what, what can happen between now and her next events for something like this to be no longer a consideration? I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's coaching. I don't know whether it's time. I'm not sure what it is, but you said it perfectly that mental health is the same as having any other injury. I think it was Brandon Marshall, I think, who I covered in college football that you know through the National Football League, who really brought that to light as of late. And you cannot discount that. And I have zero interest in the trolls who are going to say anything about it's her job. It's her job, but she's a human being and she's 24. I mean, the weight of the world is on her shoulders, literally, Literally? Physically? No, literally. Kind of. Anyway, the point is, she's there. We hope she comes back. And it sounds like from her latest soundbite that she's going to come back, which is great. Well, I hope so, because it's what, you know, would um, hopefully make, but, but, but that's, that's just us, you know, that's me. That's us. That's, that's fans. That's, that's what we're, we're, we're hoping for. I just hope that it's, something that makes her happy you know (laughs) and and you know and if she's not going to if she's fearful of of hurting herself because she's not you know or she's thinking about it mid-air mid-twist for the 15th time i mean my god she could really hurt herself yeah this is not this is not running this is not this is not skeet this is i mean what she does is superhuman I mean, the only thing that we could all relate to, and I know, you know, Brockman definitely can, is just, you know, your golf swing, which Mm. is not anything remotely close to this. But all I'm saying is that sometimes you're sitting there and you're thinking, you think too much about it. But all that just requires is a lost golf ball, or for us, a mulligan. (laughs) You know, for her, it's like she could wind up in the hospital, (laughs) you know, or, or she's fearful of not performing up to her standard and and that's just to me a very sad thing uh but i i'm also and we are also we 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 have you know our default is empathy and sympathy and you know there's a a lack of that everywhere in the world today so uh i do hope to see her again but only if it makes her happy before we talk football, what has been your favorite highlight today? Because I know you get giddy with some of these crazy highlights. Uh, Sue's uh, today's rich, richest shuttlecock minute. Um, <laughs> which, Careful, which we have created. We created well. We created it to put a spotlight on lesser-known sports like badminton, but it really is uh, a construct that allows me to say the word shuttlecock with abandon on television. <laughs> um, today's sport was dressage. Is. That's what I just I said. It was my sport. I said if I, I said that is the one sport that I could compete in. I could do that. Just saying. Dressage, a mm-hmm. uh, little pee off, little nice. dressage. Um, we got to the half path, which is the horse sort of going sideways. Yep. Um, and I said that that reminded me of leaving Dominic's in Ann Arbor uh, frequently when I was in college. That led to a full pass on occasion. Wow. That was my comment on dressage wow. today in my, if you will, shuttlecock minute. Yeah, Can you be careful with that? I don't want you to pull I'm a Steve Levy, okay? Myself. Just be careful. I, You're making me nervous I, with I, that over and over again. The person serving mimosas to the staff during the program, Suze. I mean, the rest of the crew. What are you doing? I, I just like everyone to be happy. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm all Brockman, about. Are you, Brockman, are you having the most of too? Uh, no, I don't know. I haven't had any. Uh, <laughs> he's probably at the most rich, just yeah. for the record. He's got two empty out. glasses and two thumbs pointing straight at him. Speaking of which, we did we this. Have you do, we should have you do sneaky good games to see if it actually improves your ability to wow. properly. <laughs> Wait, so dur- during the football season, Fridays, we, we slam some mimosas and then pick games? <laughs> I guess. I mean, you tell me if it improves because I – I think I didn't. I text you a couple of uh, weeks ago, or during my during my during <laughs> during my COVID uh, recuperation. I think I found an old uh, video of you with your towing the line. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh. Line segment. I think it was your bad. gambling segment where you were like forty percent or something. Yeah, I like think that. we went over that. I think anything can help. We went over so, that week. Yeah. You know, well, we I mean, it can't hurt. Maybe we get an alcohol sponsor, Rich. I mean, yeah. let's make things happen. 
I mean, I, I, I think the that proof. the Rich Eisen <laughs> show brought to you by Veuve Clicquot sounds that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking wow. about. I'm just saying. Cause bien. It, that's because if it's free, it's you, I think. Right? <laughs> by, by the way, right? Don't joke. <laughs> Me uh, too, Rich. You know that way I am. Thoughts on Aaron Rodgers' appearance as he came into Green Bay today, Rich? <laughs> well, there's two things about it. First thing, um, it's the personal and the professional. Which one do you want first, the personal or the professional? Personal. Which one do you want the Personal. personal. I would like to personally thank him for uh, taking us from draft day all the way to this day on the Rich Eisen show for all of the content that we were able to discuss uh, for it. My God, that really was, um, quite frankly, uh, that got us that got us through the storm of sure did, uh, yeah. no football. Sure did. You know? um, um, but uh, it looks like whatever concessions that got made, it's as close to – the Tom Brady um, exit strategy that you one can get um, without what getting what Tom got, which is complete free agency. Um, I don't know what Peter said in hour one, but it sure looks like this is the end of Rogers' stay unless something remarkable happens. Another wrench, to use his phrase, gets thrown in and they win a Super Bowl. I don't know how you let Aaron Rodgers walk then. Um, and then, you know, uh, otherwise, if it just winds up, let's just say, in the same way this season went, 2022 was the year that the Packers kind of pegged anyway to put uh, Jordan Love in there. And that's why Rodgers knew that and brought everything to a head right now um, to get what he wanted contractually so he can get out and get to a spot if that's what he wants um it would require green bay to trade him but they would want to get something for him rather than you know let him play it out and then walk for nothing because that's when he would get his free agency um and they certainly wouldn't let him sit there and back up jordan love you know (laughs) so um it's if they really believe in jordan love and really feel he's the next guy and are so dedicated to getting him the time prior to needing to figure out if a fifth-year option has to get picked up, then Rodgers is gone, and everybody in Green Bay should enjoy their final season with him. By the way, Rich, if you are interested in what Peter King had to say earlier on the Rich Eisen Show, you can go to yes. Peacock, and it is streaming. And you can check out that Thank interview that was in the first I'm hour. I'm going to go to the YouTube feed as well. I'll I'm, go to the YouTube feed. I'm just saying there are ways that we can give you that information. What did you think about his getup, more importantly? What about the man bun? What about the Kevin shirt, the flip-flops, or the Blade Runner glasses? Is that what it was? I have, I have not seen the way you run. Oh, God. we oh, got to get this to oh, you, Rich. Rich. Oh, I mean, are you oh, near a computer? Honey. Like, go to App Packers right now and check it out. Somebody send this guy a picture. I mean, flip flops, shorts, a uh, NBA Jam style T-shirt of Kevin from The mm. Office with the big bowl mm. of chili. Uh, he's mm. wearing Doc Brown's glasses from Back to the Future Two. Man bun, big time. And like... he's total David Beckham man bunning it. Yeah. Uh, as as um, you know, I said on uh, on this show, and people can. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, go to Peacock and the YouTube stream to see it. Um, when he was saying he was at peace and with everything, and he's saving Bryson DeChambeau's bacon from, you know, the fairway or the green and living the life that he has, I need to see that guy on the field this fall. And um, that's the professional of it, too, is that I'm, uh, it, it's, I'm psyched. This is huge. I mean, this is a monster opportunity for green bay to win every game is going to be just jam-packed with drama every game is going to be a mini season in itself and him you know he just looks comfortable in his skin he looks in shape he looks happy i mean again if the way he played golf and the way that he's just gone about his business is going to be brought um successfully to the field as a an mvp defense this is going to be lit and they are a, one of the favorites to win the NFC. There is no doubt about it. And I don't want to hear that Rodgers could have won the same way in Denver this year. That is not the same thing as staying put in Green Bay at all. Him staying put in Green Bay is much better for him than it would have been for Brady to stay in New England another year. Not even comparison. You can't compare Denver's roster with Tampa's roster, the one that Brady walked into. 
So he is clearly comfortable in his own skin, certainly the way you described the way he's shown up today. And I cannot wait. You know, week one, New Orleans, man. I mean, like, let's go. Because they've got their own quarterback situation. And they're going to now, Green Bay, stroll in with everybody back and roll it out like carpe F and <laughs> the whole season long. And I would proper to say every concept of trotting the field goal unit onto the field on fourth and goal, history. It's all going to – like every aspect of what Rodgers wants uh, in terms of the game being put on his – uh, shoulders he's going to get and I can't wait can't wait before we let you go we'll do this fast because Bob Cost is coming up on the other side of the break yes. with the big news with Texas and Oklahoma you're a traditionalist Rich is there yes. any part of you that is concerned that Michigan and Ohio State follow suit <laughs> follow suit where to go to the SEC maybe they'll create a giant Maybe everything I don't know. explodes. We talking, no, but it's funny. No, Suze, it's funny. We were talking about when the super team, super league stuff was going down with the, uh, with the Premier League. Yeah. Um, like what if co- like college was built for the possibility of doing that more than anything, and this is a step closer to that. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. the Big Ten might be looking at the the rest of the remaining Big Twelve teams and saying, you know, who could come aboard here and who could come aboard if the ACC wants to jump some ship or or what have you, but we're another step closer to it. And, oh, my God, Hoskins just texted me a photograph that you're talking about of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that happened. Oh, my the God. The floor you is yours. And every... Oh, my God. How would I look in those glasses, Steve? Not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> All right. Wait, All the right. hair or the glasses? Call an honest assessment. The hair's That's nice. Judgment. Okay. The hair, well, can somebody Photoshop that hair on? Oh, no. I don't know if I want to see that. No, no. Uh, no, no, no. We need Rich Photoshopped into this look immediately. Someone's yeah. got to get on Smitch, it. can we get that? Let's go. Smitch, let's go. You're at home. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Rich, all I have it. to say is you're welcome. Okay. And we'll That's keep the lights show. on for you. Have okay, fun Tokyo go Golding. Uh, I'm going to go play golf with DP and Shap. Right oh, oh nice. wait. Is that a real thing that's happening? That's right. Me, DP Schaap, and uh, um, the agent to the stars, Agent Orange himself, Reed, Reed Bergman. Oh, my <laughs> God. Reed Z. Peedsy? Oh, wow. Nice. Yep, we're going. Fantastic. All right. We want have pictures, fun. live stream. Let's go. I think we should have, uh, you guys should maybe tape something. Get it out there. Your people want to see it. I'm just saying. Well, I'm out of, all I'm saying is I am, I am out of quarantine, and I am pegging it up, and this is something I'm very excited about. Nice. <laughs> Hit him straight. Keep your head down. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very yep. much. Bye-bye. All right, Rich. Hey, bud. Bye-bye. There you go. Go have fun playing golf. We'll just be here working. That's all. And having mimosas. What a foursome. Right? (laughs) Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.